What's up everybody, it's Park with BI Elite. I have an awesome video to kick off 2021 on how to perform currency conversion with dynamic formatting in Power BI. This is going to reach out and grab today's exchange rates and use them in the currency conversion calculation. And then finally, it's going to show the converted values in the proper formats with the proper currency symbol. So there are a couple pieces to this, but the end product is this really cool solution that's going to allow you to convert to different currencies in case you have clients in different countries that are using different currencies, or you just wanna see how your sales or revenue would convert to a different currency, you'll be able to do that very easily. And like I said, this is refreshable, so it's always going to grab the latest exchange rate to use in your currency conversions. If you just wanna download this PBIX to use it for yourself, the link to the blog post is down in the description. There will be a download link on that blog post. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on how to build this yourself. Here I am in a blank file. The first thing that I'm gonna do is connect to a couple different web pages. And these web pages are gonna give me the information about the exchange rate and also different currency symbols. So to start with exchange rate, I have this nice website here. I'll include this link in the description of the video as well. Uh, this has just a nice table showing the current exchange rates for multiple different currencies. I think there are 32 currencies in terms of euros. So I can actually just take this URL and connect to it directly within Power BI with the get data web option. I just need to paste this URL in and now Power BI is gonna search for any HTML tables on the page. And that's exactly what we have on that page. So let that do its thing for a second and we will have a table option. We have this table one. If we click on it, we see all of the currencies, the currency name, the exchange rate, and this column that we probably don't need towards the end. So let's go ahead and load this in. I'm going to go to transform data and I'm gonna rename this to be exchange rates. Very good, and I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this convert column. Actually, I'm going to highlight my columns and get rid of the other column because it doesn't seem like I need that. So that's good for now. Now I just wanna get the currency symbol so that I can show the currency with its proper formatting. And that's coming from a different website, this justforex.com. Uh, that just has a nice table with the currencies as we currently have them, their three letter combination, and then we can grab the symbol off of that as well. So let's go ahead and copy that URL, come back to Power BI, and let's do new source web and do the exact same thing. So let's look for table one here. Yep, that looks like what we need. So let's go ahead and grab that, okay. And I'm gonna rename this table to be uh, currency symbols. That's good. Um, I just need the currency and the symbol, and I also could grab the name as well. So I'm gonna remove other columns. Let's see if I have name on my exchange rate table. I do, I do, so I don't need actually this name either. Let me go ahead and get rid of name. So I just have my currency and my symbol. I'm gonna merge this onto the exchange rate table. Firstly, I can uh, not enable the load here because I don't need this information to come through in my Power BI data model. I just need to load it onto this other table. So I can do that with the merge queries option. I am going to join to my currency symbols table. I'm gonna join on my currency from my first table, my currency from my second table. Uh, right off the bat, we see that the selection matches 32 of 32 rows. That's a very good sign. So I'll go ahead and click okay and expand out our table just to give me that symbol. And now we have the symbol of the currency that we have on this table. For example, for the Canadian dollar, we see a dollar symbol. And for the pound sterling, we see a pound symbol. So that's perfect. We're gonna use that for our dynamic formatting. I'm going to move the symbol column uh, just over one. There we go. The last thing that I need personally is I need to convert this exchange rate conversion column to USD. Right now this is converting based on euros, but I know most of my data is gonna come through as dollars, as US dollars. So I actually need to convert this so that I can convert all of these different um, currencies from a US dollar to the currencies. I don't wanna go through euros. So that's actually pretty easy to do. I'm just going to duplicate uh, this existing query and I'm gonna get rid of some steps here. Let me just exit out of a couple steps. So from here, all I need to do to perform that conversion is to filter down to USD and drill into this number right here. This is my conversion from Euro to USD. And I just need to use that 
in my currency conversion column. So I'm actually going to create a new column and I'm going to call this exchange rate, exchange rate USD. And that's actually just equal to our original exchange rate divided by our uh, exchange rate two column is what it's called. Exchange rate two and click OK. So that's what this new uh, column is going to look like. We can actually get rid of the other one. Before we do, I just want to make sure USD, if we convert from USD to USD, we see it's an exchange rate of one. That makes sense. So now all of these other currencies are in terms of USD. Again, that's just for me. If you want to do this for another currency, for example, if you normally have your data in the Polish Zwarte, you can actually go through the same steps and drill down to the Polish Zwarte and then uh, divide the original exchange rate by that new number and you will now have all of the other currencies in terms of your selected currency. But that's all I need to do. I'm going to get rid of my original exchange rate column and now I'm left with my exchange rate USD column. That's perfect. That's all I really need to do on the back end. I'm going to quickly uh, disable my load here. So I just have my exchange rate table, my final exchange rate table coming through. Let's go ahead and close and apply and get on to the final step uh, in order to get the dynamic format strings. I also realized I actually don't have any raw data in here, so I'm just gonna fake some data to be used as sales data. I'm gonna call this table sales, and I'll call this column revenue, and let's just give a couple of sales of 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000. That's gonna equal out to $6,000 of total sales. So let me go ahead and load that dummy table in, and I'm gonna create a quick measure called total sales and it's just going to be equal to the sum of the revenue and I'll give that a quick dollar formatting so now if we throw this into a card uh, we have six thousand dollars of sales and if we create a table here we can show the six thousand dollars of sales in the different currencies let's go ahead and throw in currency I'll throw in symbol exchange rates and total sales at the end so as you can see, we have all of our currencies. We have the currency symbol, we have the exchange rate, and our total sales is static at 6,000. So currently it is wrong. Uh, two things that's wrong about it. One, the value itself is wrong because we're not using exchange rate yet. And secondly, the formatting is wrong as well because we're just using the dollar symbol all the way down. So in the next step, we're gonna solve both of those problems. And in order to solve that, we actually need to use an external tool called Tabular Editor in order to create calculation groups. And calculation groups are really the only current way in order to perform that dynamic formatting. There are already a few great videos on how to create calculation groups in Power BI, but we will walk through the steps as well. So you just need to go to the external tools tab and you need to have made sure that you've already downloaded and installed Tabular Editor. You can simply Google for download tabular editor, Power BI in Google, and you will find the way to download tabular editor. Once you install that, it is going to show up in your external tools ribbon within Power BI. And then you just need to click on the tabular editor button once you're in the desired Power BI file. So I'm gonna click on tabular editor, and that's going to open up this connection to my tabular editor that's connected to my Power BI model. So in my tables, I will see both the exchange rate table and my sales table, like I see on the right side of my Power BI desktop. And in order to create the necessary calculation group, you just need to right click on tables, create new calculation group. And I can call this, let's say dynamic currency. And then I need to right click on this new calculation group and select create new calculation item. This calculation item doesn't need to have a specific name, but it does need to have two different things. One, it needs to have an expression, and secondly, it needs to have a format string expression. For the expression, this part is going to take care of our currency conversion. Basically, we're gonna use this calculation item to say, multiply my total sales by my current currency exchange rate. But to just get us up and running with a working calculation item, we can just use the selected measure formula. So close that off with open and close parentheses, selected measure, and let's go ahead and control S to save it, or you can just go to file save. When you do that, in Power BI Desktop, you're going to see this uh, little notification saying you need to refresh it. Go ahead and refresh this now. So in order to use that calculation item, all you need to do is basically add that calculation item that you see is now in your fields pane into the filter context of this visual. The easiest way is to just throw this into the filter pane. So I have my 
name item here and specifically that's called name because we still have it called name here in the calculation group we can throw this name into the add data field here in the visual level filters and just filter by that new calculation and you can see nothing's actually changed because our formula selected measure is actually taking our total sales and not really doing anything with it we see that our total sales is still six thousand let's say we divide this by two for some uh, reason let's go ahead and save it as we go back and save we see that our total sales is now three thousand in order to show you what this format string expression does when we leave it blank it's going to take the format string of our current measure but let's say we want to provide something specific let's say we don't want the dollar sign anymore in quotes we can just do a number comma number that's just going to give us a nicely formatted number without any dollar sign or currency symbols as we save that again we see that our total sales is now without the currency symbol so we're able to change the currency and the actual calculation itself directly within tabular editor so let's come back to our expression to handle the currency conversion so it's going to be our selected measure times uh, our currency exchange rate so we have this exchange rate usd column so i need to use the selected value function to grab our current currency exchange rate so our table is called exchange rate and our column is called exchange rate USD. Let's close that off. And in case that we're not looking at a single currency exchange rate, I just want to use one to symbolize US dollars. And let's go ahead and save this and see how it's going to show up now in our Power BI model. So our total sales now is showing up pretty well. We see that in order to get our total sales into Australian dollars, the exchange rate is around 1.3. So we multiply our $6,000 of USD sales uh, by that 1.3 and we get 7,800 AUD. So that's working perfectly. Now we just need to get the formatting in as well. Let's go ahead and change from expression to format string expression. So this instead of a hard coded value is also going to be dynamic based on the currency row that we're currently on. So it's going to be a very similar selected value and from our same exchange rates table our column this time is called symbol so we need to grab the symbol of the currency that we're looking at if we aren't looking at a single symbol let's use the dollar sign as a default let's close that off and then we need to append on one little item that's going to be number comma number and that's going to symbolize that after the symbol, we want to show numbers separated by commas. Let's go ahead and control S one more time and see how our final result is going to look. So like we showed with the AUD example, AUD shows with a dollar symbol uh, with the converted value of 7.8 thousand. We see down below the pounds, uh, the conversion rate is actually 0.736. So we multiply our $6,000 of sales times 0.736 we end up with 4,000 pounds with the pound symbol as well. One little gotcha that I want to show you is this one here. Um, this symbol is P with a dot, and we see that it comes through as a very small value. That's because with our dynamic format string, as we put in a P with a dot, it's actually causing this format string to not work properly by searching for a dot, and then it messes up with the numbers. So in order to do that, I'm actually just going to replace all dots that come through in our currency symbols uh, just to not have those. So let's go ahead and replace values. So instead of a period, I, I'm just going to replace that with nothing. So in the case of our P with a dot, it's now just going to show with a P. And now if we close and apply uh, this P for the RUB, will now show just fine. And there we go. We see that that is now showing as a much larger value based on that exchange rate. So that is the entire trick here. If you do just want this downloadable file, make sure you check out the blog post. The link is down in the description. I really like this solution because it is refreshable every day. So every day these exchange rates are changing. You can refresh it and see what the value is in these converted currencies. This was also a good intro into Tabular Editor, the tool that you need to use in order to create calculation groups, which are the only way to get these dynamic format strings with the different currency symbols shown before the values. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We also have some awesome training courses covering Power BI, DAX, Alteryx, and SQL over at training.bielite.com. Hope to see you there.